All right, guys, it's Jerningham here. I've been thinking, why don't they remaster the Godfather games from the old gen on, um, what's it called? PS2, the Godfather games, they're very good. And the PS3, I remember the very last one. Why don't they remaster all three of the ones for the PS4 as a trilogy set? It just makes sense. They've remastered all the, they've remastered all the Mafia games and downloads. They've got uh, the third one. We got the second one, and we got the first one. Now the download of the third one will be out soon, even though you can get it on disc. And anyway, the first uh, Mafia game, which was on the old gen on PS2, is going to be on the PS4 in August. So why can't they just remaster the Godfather games? The films are great, the Godfather, and so were the. Imagine if they made a film. I think they did, I don't think they made a film called The Mafia. I don't know, but anyway, it was a good game. All them games I'm talking about. It'd be nice to see a remake of the Godfather games, but uh, who knows what's going to happen. Um, like I say, um, things are still kicking off in um, protesting in George Floyd's death on the news channel, ABC News 7. Um, it was kicking off yesterday, protesting. They said it was going to be a peaceful protest, and you've got NBC News. That are showing it as well. Um, probably got Fox News that's probably showing it, and other news like um, MSNBC. And or there's loads of news in America that's showing this. Uh, Eyewitnesses News, ABC 7NC, New York. Uh, NBC New York. They've got so many news channels, these American people. I mean, we've got lots of news channels as well. And you've got a news channel called KTLA5. CBS Los Angeles news channel, NBCLA. I'm looking at this on the computer. Uh, num number nine news Australia, news being fun, NBC News Seven. I'm just looking for all the news channels on the, as, as we're talking. Indian Today, we don't that anywhere as well. France 24 English. Now there's a lot of news. We've got the UK news as well, like Sky News. We've got. Uh, Probably they were protesting there about the guy's death in London. It was a peaceful protest, apparently. And we got the let's see, news channel. We're trying to find all the American news channels. There's probably like hundreds of thousands of them. Um, we had some speaking about today um, in the UK about um, Matt Hancock's um, new COVID-19 deaths in the UK. I think there's like 405 plus 101 that have gone up. Um my brain's somewhere else today, guys. I do apologise. I'm just thinking of all these things. You've got a NASA people in space that like NASA. As you can see, I'm flicking through. I'll show you what I'm flicking through. This is what I'm flicking through on the TV, all these channel things. Uh, Donald Trump's still saying he wants to have... I reckon Donald Trump wants war with China. He's still accusing him of the virus. Who knows? If they're pushing for that. And Hong Kong as well. They're still fighting over the border with uh, India. India, China, India. Trying to get my words out. Sometimes I may be a bit confused. Brazil is still uh, got uh, coronavirus. I'm just checking the news now to see what's on. It's probably just sometimes they, sh they say the same thing on the news. They say different things, and uh, you know we all like different things, don't we? Sky News. Let's have a look here. Adverts. <laughs> Typical, it's always an advert on Sky News. Ten hours ago. Pandemic. Let's see what this video is about. Let's press play, as we do. So we're going to be playing this pandemic thing about coronavirus. always see the changes that coronavirus is making to the way we will be living our lives. At first glance, everything might seem normal. But what even is normal anymore, since few believe there will ever be a return to life as it was pre-pandemic? A new poll for Sky News by YouGov 
found only 27% of people think life will be much the same as it was before, while far more, 59%, said it will be significantly different. We like normal, and if something works, we just repeat. Um, and the fact that there was uh, this kind of a disruptive environment has given us time to think and adapt, and I think we've done it beautifully, to be honest. Uh, I don't think we're going to go back to a world that looks the same. People will be more guarded in their um, in their approach towards strangers. They may be more caring towards strangers as well. Um, I, I think that uh, we'll be shopping a lot less. So what does that mean for Europe's busiest shopping street? Or at least it was potentially facing an existential crisis. But what do people want? Well, the message is bleak for the high street. 39% of people we survey think they'll go back to shopping in stores, while almost half, 49%, said they'll continue online. When everything goes back to normal, I don't think I'll rush straight away because everyone's going to be rushing. I feel like I'll still be online for a while. I might even stay online, it just depends. I feel like when you shop online, things are cheaper anyway. I think what will happen is that I will probably, for more important things like uh, okay, clothes, things like that, yeah, I think I'll probably be doing a lot more shopping online. Um, but for groceries, things like that, I think I'll still be going out. This all might be part of a trend to stay at home more, with the future of the daily commute also in doubt. 40% of those... Hold on two seconds. Trying to do a video here. Sorry about that, guys. I was halfway trying to do a video and. To be they said they'd return to commuting back to the workplace, while 47% said they'll continue from home. Companies will realise they don't need to maintain massive office complexes and that most of their, most of their uh, staff can actually work from home. So there won't be the demand for office space. Where you spend your time changes who you spend your time with. 37% claim lockdown brought them closer to their partner. Do you think actually there have been any personal upsides for you in the pandemic in the way? Closer to my family. I appreciate my friends. I appreciate simple things. And what I think I've taken from it is that we don't need as much. We don't need to be rushing around as much. And Simple things are pleasurable and they matter relationships and enjoying just amazing weather. Coronavirus has been a devastating experience for so many in society. But collectively, the experience of lockdown has provided some glimpses for people of what could be done better. Is now a moment for a shake-up that means the country and the globe could do things better in future? Lockdown has meant a lot less of this. Pollutants of all forms. Breathing in purer air is popular. I think a lot of people uh, have started to appreciate the outside spaces a lot more. Um, also, I think, I don't know, people have started to see how nature is reacting to us not being around, which is fantastic. I mean, that's, it's kind of like almost starting the blueprint of a new future. Many agree. Asked to pick the top issue facing the globe, 33% selected climate change and the environment. This is more than twice as many who think preventing future pandemics is a priority, selected by 15% of people. Meanwhile, just 3% chose terrorism, despite its dominance in the early years of this century. We spent lockdown dreaming of a more idyllic future. But the truth is we won't be able to stay afloat without emergency support for some time to come. Sam Coates, Sky News. Okay, that's very interesting. Well, let's see what else is on it. A report for scanners impersonating staff to obtain bank details and passwords. The Financial Times leads with Mark Zuckerberg. That's what else is on this TV. After several... <laughs> You see, other things I missed out three days ago now. Trying to find today's news.
coronavirus China. An increasingly confident China. An incumbent superpower. And a clash of values embodied by pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong. Disagreement on Hong Kong, as well as on trade and technology, existed long before the pandemic. But experts say coronavirus has intensified the US-China standoff, raising the risk of what some see as a new Cold War. We might recognize Hong Kong as kind of the new Berlin, but whether Hong Kong is the West or the East Berlin is hard to say or guarantee. But it really depends on how we can stand up and fight back. In the UK, a sense of normality as lockdown rules are eased. But out of the sunshine, a serious rethink is expected of UK policy on China. Also on the horizon, a struggle for all states to unite or to accept the will of the strongest. Britain's interest and influence extend far beyond its doors. Its foreign policy, like other liberal democracies, is placed on overseas alliances and on an international system of agreements and global institutions. And yet, it was the instinct of all nations, including in Europe, to close their borders unilaterally and turn inwards when the pandemic struck. This former top diplomat says the pandemic has sharpened rivalries at a time when countries need to work together. We are at one of those watershed moments, a bit like after the Second World War. I think what we risk is a kind of the world fractured into spheres of influence again. Clearly a Chinese sphere, an American sphere, a European sphere, perhaps rather weaker. China's standing firm despite mounting US pressure. Do you think the pandemic could actually increase the risk of the tensions between the US and China escalating, perhaps even to war? I hope not. Uh, I hope the Cold War will not become a hot war. I think Chinese leaders keep continue to stress US and China should not decouple. We have a, a lot to learn and to benefit for our continued engagement. Britain will certainly be seeking unity over division in this post-pandemic world, but not at any cost. Deborah Haynes, Sky News. Well, guys, you heard that for yourself. US and China want Cold War. But well, I don't think the Chinese want war, but the USA do. And I'm doing a briefing from. Uh... <coughs> oh, I've got a bit of a sneeze there. And uh, doing a briefing from the space NASA. If you're into that. This is one day ago. It was an uneasy wait, but as the count. And lots of people like space and stuff. Three, two, Most people may have seen it already, but. Aborting their first attempt last week, they were back today to try again. This time, the weather didn't halt lift off. And the dragon loud and clear. And the veteran astronauts and friends became pioneers of a new world order for space flight. We view it as, a, as an opportunity, but also a responsibility for the American people, for the SpaceX team, for all of NASA that's uh, put this opportunity together and, and entrusted us with it. It's incredibly humbling to be here to start out the next uh, launch from the United States. We're looking forward to getting uh, up close and personal with uh, Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon here. Lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis. The last time the US sent humans into orbit was in 2011. Since then, they've had to piggyback on Russian projects. 
Donald Trump was so keen to witness the change, he came back again to watch today, even as his country burned in anger. century ago, the Apollo moon missions used this same launch pad. The spectators are gone, but another dream is realised, one that could take us all just that little bit closer to the moon and Mars. It was incredible. Uh, appreciate all the hard work and uh, thanks for the great uh, rise of space. Ali Fortescue, Sky News. Well, it's got staring in the queue, is yeah, I'm just watching something on YouTube. You know what a lot of people think about a lot of things, don't they? In their brain. I mean. More protests in LA. As you guys can see here, if you want to watch the rest of this, there's loads of protests, things like a beeping noise. There's a lot of people there, see? Tons of people. Loads of security there, the police that are guarding that temple place. Like I say, all they need to have done is not killed that guy, and these wouldn't these, these things wouldn't have happened. But no, they want to do what they wanted to do. And uh, something else will be starting on ABC News at uh, June the first, two thousand twenty, six ten p.m. So that, as you can see here. This hasn't started yet for a lot of people, but it will start later, so, you know, it's for I'd mention. President, I will Donald Trump speaking now, and uh, A-L-J-A-L's E-R-R, English. And order, and an so, yeah. of all Donald protesters. Trump's news. Loads of people are but watching. Our nation has been gripped by professional anarchists, violent mobs, arsonists, looters, criminals, rioters, Antifa, and others. A number of state and local governments have failed to take necessary action to safeguard their residents. Innocent people have been savagely beaten, like the young man in Dallas, Texas, who was left dying on the street or the woman in upstate New York, viciously attacked by dangerous thugs. Small business owners have seen their dreams utterly destroyed. So New people have got a live chat there, so there's people doing comments. That person's doing a live chat comment, like, saying ha-ha. So you can talk on this news channel, homes. if you really want to. A police precinct has been overrun here in the nation's capital, the Lincoln Memorial, and the World War II Memorial have been vandalized. One of our most historic churches was set ablaze. A federal officer in California, an African-American enforcement hero, was shot and killed. These are not acts of peaceful protest. These are acts of domestic terror. The destruction of innocent life and the spilling of innocent blood is an offense to humanity and a crime against God. America needs creation, not destruction. Cooperation, not contempt. Security, not anarchy. Healing, not hatred. Justice, not chaos. This is our mission, and we will succeed. 100% we will succeed. Our country always wins. That is why I am taking immediate presidential action to stop the violence and restore security and safety in America. I am mobilizing all available federal resources, civilian and military, to stop the rioting and looting, to end the destruction and arson, and to protect the rights of law-abiding Americans, including your Second Amendment rights. Therefore, the following measures are going into effect immediately. Civil war is on. We are ending the riots and lawlessness that has spread throughout our country. We will end it now. Today, I have strongly recommended to every governor to deploy 
the National Guard in sufficient numbers that we dominate the streets. Mayors and governors must establish an overwhelming law enforcement presence until the violence has been quelled. If the city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. I am also taking swift and decisive action to protect our great capital, Washington, D.C. What happened in this city last night was a total disgrace. As we speak, I am dispatching thousands and thousands of heavily armed soldiers, military personnel, and law enforcement officers to stop the rioting, looting, vandalism, assaults, and the wanton destruction of property. We are putting everybody on warning. Our seven o'clock curfew will be strictly enforced. Those who threaten innocent life and property will be arrested, detained, and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I want the organizers of this terror to be on notice that you will face severe criminal penalties and lengthy sentences in jail. This includes Antifa and others who are leading instigators of this violence. One law and order, and that is what it is. One law, we have one beautiful law. And once that is restored and fully restored, we will help you, we will help your business, and we will help your family. America is founded upon the rule of law. It is the foundation of our prosperity, our freedom, and our very way of life. But where there is no law, there is no opportunity. Where there is no justice, there is no liberty. Where there is no safety, there is no future. We must never give in to anger or hatred. If malice or violence reigns, then none of us is free. I take these actions today with firm resolve and with a true and passionate love for our country. By far, our greatest days lie ahead. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to pay my respects to a very, very special place. Thank you very much. You lost Donald Trump. That was Donald Trump uh, making his statement there, started by saying it was his first duty to defend uh, our country and our people, as he, he said, and that even though everyone was revolted by the death of George Floyd, he could not allow uh, righteous, uh, 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 righteous crowds uh, to be drowned out uh, by the mob. He said, I'll fight to protect you. Uh, he called a lot of the acts that have been going on, the riots and the violence, uh, as acts of domestic terrorism. He said he would end the riots and lawlessness. He'd recommend to governors that they deploy the National Guard, and if they refuse, Trump would then deploy uh, the military. So let's take you live to the White House uh, now, just outside uh, the White House. Uh, so President Trump was speaking in the Rose Garden while protests were going on outside and the police was just trying to disperse the crowds gathered there using a flash or stun grenades uh basically very loud with tear gas as well we can speak to shia Bratansi, who is uh, with the crowds uh, there the optics were remarkable shia just as the president was talking of course we could see the police moving in just outside of the white house what's going on now It's a bit of a standoff again, and we know that what's happened has emerged. Washington, D.C. The police will fire smoke bombs with the enormous noise, and then, and then they'll move forward. Black Lives Matter, bitch. I was going to ask, man, maybe, uh, well, we'll, get, we'll catch up with them. Um, yeah. You want to know modern-day racism? How Trump is refusing to unveil Obama's presidential portrait at the White House. But that's been before Trump. It always began before Trump, but that's modern day racism. Did that get any coverage? Was anyone upset? No, because black people know how to take a knee. 
because we know how we know what, who the haters are. We been knew who the haters truly are. That's modern day racism. Did it get covered? No, but we're humble about it. You think about this thing? Donald Trump just gave a speech in the Rose Garden. He said there's one law, one law, and that has to be respected. And he was talking about the shopkeepers whose businesses have been burnt out. No. Do you think that's the priority right no. now? Trump's law is his law. Clearly, you've seen it. You've seen it. Oh, I'm going to pass this bill to do this. I'm going to pass this bill to do that. It's not It's not anybody else's law. It's not the law that he signed. It's not the law that we, we the people, as a democracy, stand up for. It's his law. Again, it's more about, it's more about the system there, isn't it? I mean, it's all about one man, Donald Trump. This is, um, I mean, he's a, a very obvious example, I guess, of people not perhaps realizing what this is about. Explain... Give me the definition is it of better a system. For, is it better for Give Trump, me the definition of a system. Is it better for Trump to quite openly say nothing's going to change, we're going to protect property, we're going to protect businesses, that's our main priority? <laughs> or is it better for Obama to say, oh no, we're listening, we're listening, but then protect businesses and nothing changes either? I mean, it, this is honesty with Donald Trump. Oh, do you think this is honesty? I mean, you show you don't care, but what does it do for your people, right? As a state, we're here, as a democracy, it's supposed to be all 50 states coming together. That's not president to me, nor nor is anybody else that acts that way. A white, black, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Hispanic, Filipino. It's just what's just and what's not just. That's what I'm here. That's what everybody else is here for. Are you frightened? What do you think the police are capable of? That's the question. I'm here at a peaceful protest. Are you frightened? Are you scared? It's concerning. So you're, so you're a little bit frightened. Are you frightened by the people around you? Are you frightened? You're, you're frightened by the people around you. So why aren't you afraid of the police? No, I'm frightened about what will happen to them. Uh, okay. So you heard it right there. It's all about vocabulary, grammar, just knowing what you're saying to one another because right there you could have offended me. Right there, your words could have been misconstrued, right? So there you go. Education. Uh, elbow bump. Uh, right, so we'll wait for the next round of smoke and that'll mean that the police are coming forward. Okay, Shihab Rakansi just outside the White House uh, in the middle of those protests. Uh, Shihab, thank you. Let's go to Kimberly Halkett, who is within White House grounds. And well, of course, as you guys can see for yourself and people haven't seen it, it's kicking off a lot in that in, in America mm -hmm. at the moment. People are very mad and angry, which I don't blame them to be why, because I've lost a loved one and a relative and a friend and a family member. Anyone with a, with a brain and a heart would do that. I'm going to check out the UK now, just now, I think. So it says, there's no evidence to catch COVID-19 from picture of a letter. I mean, you can't catch it from a letter. It takes 2 to 14 days to deploy symptoms after becoming infected. This is what I'm watching, so I'm not making it up. And you guys, some guys may think I'm making it up. I'm saying, look, so here you go. Call The Last of Us. There you go. This is the Sky News thing. That's coming up next on Sky News. So, I don't know where this world's going to be going, guys, to be truthful. I really don't know. I have my handy hand. Who knows? Anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I shall catch you in the next video. Thank you for joining this one. See you next one. Peace. I wish things were better than this. This world we're living in is going downhill like this. It'd be nice if the world would go up again. Anyway, see you next one. Peace.